Okay, welcome to the fish multiplication tables, or times tables as they're called in some places. This activity can be found at www.visnos.com. At Visnos, we aim to provide visual representation of mathematical concepts. In this case, you can see the fish swim in or out of the tables, depending on the multiplication values. This square has a product of 10 times 10 maximum, which means in total we have 100 fish, each numbered from 1 to 100. As I've just demonstrated, to choose your tables manually, you just click on those buttons. To empty the tables, you click on the time symbol in the top left hand corner. As in all the activities of Visnos, if you move the mouse cursor over a control, the top bar will tell you what that control does. In this case, the fish direction control is vertical, which means all the fish inside the tables are vertically numbered. Notice as I click 8, the fish all arrive into the empty spaces. But if I click the other 8, all the fish have to rearrange themselves. So this arrival and leaving behavior is actually affected by the direction control. So if I change this to horizontal now, you'll see the fish rearrange themselves, and now they are labeled horizontally, which means when I click the numbers below, they're actually coming into the empty spaces in a nice horizontal line. They also leave in a similar fashion, with only the fish to have to move moving. When I click this next button, it always does the right pattern. In other words, if we have direction horizontal, you'll get a horizontal line added to the table. When I change it to vertical, the fish rearrange themselves. If I click next, it's a final line of vertical fish arriving. So that's 9 times 7, 10 times 7, which is the maximum in that line. So the next one's 1 times 8. So you get that idea. So the next thing to look at is the random button. And you probably guessed, clicking the random button will create a random tables value. So this is a great way to blitz the class and see they know all the values. If you click next after random, it will also give you the next table value according to the direction. Next I'm going to look at auto mode. So the auto mode is automatic. This is the time value which you can change. So that's six seconds delay between tables. So when you first click auto, the fish leave the tables. So you can click a new starting value. In this case, I'm going to start with one times one, the first value in the tables. If you click the other one, you'd find the fish arrive in the horizontal direction. As you can see now, they're arriving in a vertical line. So I'm going to speed things up. I'm going to look at some of these other controls. So the numbers. If I click none, all the numbers disappear. So this makes things a little bit harder. So now you have to actually go through the process of counting the fish. Clicking these boxes as well will hide them. In fact, any time you see one of those little small question marks, if you click, it will hide and click again to actually show. So now we have the answer hidden. But we're going to look at the sequence part next. So if I click sequence, we see now we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This is a vertical sequence going down, even though the direction is horizontal, which seems counterintuitive, but that's because of the way the fish are labeled. So changing that direction, now we see the horizontal sequence, which now it's a seven times table, seven, 14, 21, 28. So the last thing now to look at, is I'm gonna change numbers to last. So that's that done. And I'm also gonna click this product button. So now we can see the products as they appear on a traditional table square. So it's all happening a bit fast, but now you can see as the new fish arrives to make the product, it's always matching the number of the red product number behind. It's obviously crucial that the children understand the difference between the black counting numbers and the red product numbers.